did when my friend's husband wanted us to have dinner alone together? I, female 31, was living in another country for three years. I kept in contact with few friends from college, including Camilla, female 29. Camilla met and got married to her husband Joe, male 35, while I was away. I came home a month ago and started hanging out with Camilla more than the other friends since we're close. However, I noticed Joe behaving strangely around me, constantly complimenting my looks slash outfits, and recently has been trying to get us to have time alone together. This gave me weird vibes, but I didn't dare tell Camilla since they're newlyweds. Two months. So what I did was, whenever he runs into me in the mall or the coffee shop, I instantly call Camilla and give her my location so she could come. He ran into me in the restaurant last night and sat at my table without even asking if it was okay. I let it slide. Then he started complimenting my outfit and my nails. Then went on about how he's always wanted us to have alone time together so that we could get to know each other well. I smiled and immediately texted Camilla telling her her husband was with me and asked her to join us for dinner. Joe kept asking me questions and smiling at me every three to five seconds till Camilla showed up. I saw her, waved and said, Oh, what a coincidence. Camilla's here. Joe's smile faded and his face turned red. She said hi, then sat next to him and he didn't say anything but stared at me angrily the whole time. They went home after dinner and I stayed longer. Once I got into my car, Joe called me and was annoyed saying I shouldn't have called Camilla when he already stated he wanted us to have dinner alone. He again said that I was being paranoid for no reason because he just wanted to get to know me better as Camilla's friend. But to be completely honest, I didn't buy into this excuse. He said that he didn't appreciate how sneaky and dismissive I was towards his wishes and that I hurt his feelings because of what I did. Am I the a-hole? Am I being unreasonable and not sitting alone with him? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. That was epic. You were sneaky and dismissive of his wishes? Give me a break. You might want to talk with her about how he's behaving though. He sounds very creepy. Gaslighting 101. He's scary. 100% agree. Opie's friend needs to know. He's giving off predator vibes. Don't answer any more calls from him unless you're able to record them, regardless of legality. Those only come into play if brought before a court, so you have proof in case he tries to twist your conversation in any way. And he definitely gives off the vibes that he would. Not day home. And why not tell him you called Camilla? I do it every time right there. Hey Camilla, your husband somehow managed to be at the same restaurant slash coffee shop slash retail store I'm in. Again? You want to join us? Just tell him, I do not want to have dinner with you. And this is actually really creepy that you keep turning up whenever I'm alone. Let him get angry. He's acting really inappropriately and borderline dangerous. OP, I don't know if you live in a small town or a neighborhood where this could be happenstance, but my senses are tingling about how often he knows where you are. Maybe check out your phone for tracking? Hope I'm just being paranoid. Yeah, the frequency of this is questionable. Not the a-hole, for not sitting with him and being alone together. If someone saw you two together, they could immediately jump to conclusions and assume that he's having an affair. Glad you didn't take the risk of being with him alone. But you're the a-hole for not telling Camilla about Joe. Come on, tell her that Joe has been hitting on you. Yeah, she just got married, but his behavior is probably going to get worse. He probably has cheated on her by now. This is such a tricky situation for OP. If she tells Camilla, Camilla could blame her to save face about her husband. If she doesn't tell Camilla and she finds out, Camilla could blame her just the same. It's really a no-win for everyone. I think Opie's doing the right thing to put Camilla in the situation so she can see for herself. Next story. Am I the a-hole for keeping my boyfriend from his family gifts? Plus update. Original post. Me and my boyfriend are preparing to buy a house for 330k. We have put in our offer, got in the inspection, and are just waiting for all the contingencies to be met. We have until next week to pull out of the contract. The house is small but nice. Everything was falling into place until his mom offered him to buy her old 500k home for only 350k. It isn't the nicest house, but it seemed like a great deal if we fix it up and resell it. But this is where things get complicated. 330k is already at the top of our budget. We could only afford it because we got seller help. Since we can't afford 350k, she wants us to rent the house from her for two years until we can afford it while we fix it up. But the main reason we are buying it to avoid losing money from renting. The house has visible deteriorated spots on the pillars and the whole inside needs to be remodeled. Who knows what else is wrong with it? 
He asked me if I want to buy his mom's house, but I said no because it's too much work. Also, we aren't even sure if it's really worth 500k. He obviously really wanted me to consider it, so I told him to get pictures from his mom of how the inside currently looks, because I haven't fully seen the inside. As soon as he got the pictures, I saw how much work it was, and it made me not want it even more. He also told me that once we fix it up and sell it, his mom wants us to give her 100k from whatever money we make to return the favor. After the two years of renting, remodels, and spending 100k, we wouldn't even make that much money in my opinion. I told him I don't want the house still. He was like, okay, fine, then call my mom and tell her that you don't want it. Me and his mom don't have the best relationship, but I felt like it isn't my place to call her to tell her that anyways. I never even said I wanted it in the first place. He then calls his mom to tell her I don't want the house because it's too much work. He keeps trying to get me to say something while he is talking to her to get us to have a conversation, but I don't want to be a part of it. Once I finally gave in and talked to her, she starts guilt-tripping me saying I'm keeping him from his family gift. After the call ends, he says if I don't agree, he is going to be upset about this for a long time because he is missing out on a great deal. I honestly feel like there is a possibility of something fishy is going on, and his mom is just trying to make money off of us fixing the house up. If it is a gift, why do we have to give her 100k at the end? It wouldn't be the first time we fixed things up for her and didn't get much in return. Anyways, now I don't know if I'm being an a-hole and keeping him from his blessings or if I'm protecting us from years of stress. I personally feel like we would be much happier in our nice house that we already found. Not to mention he was happy about the house we found until the situation came up. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole. This all sounds fishy to me. Are you sure the contract doesn't also include mommy also gets to live in the house with you the entire time forever? Plus you have to give me money. Maybe mom wants someone to upgrade her house, she says as a renter. Then mom would decide to sell it to someone else? Funny you mention that, because one, the house is located one minute from her house and I felt like she would be intruding in our space somehow because of that. And two, she had to start to fix up that house's basement in the past, because we wanted to rent the basement out from her. And right when we finished clearing it up, she rented it to someone else. Okay, so she's literally screwed y'all in the past. Your boyfriend's judgment seems lacking. Why he doesn't think she'd screw you all over again is beyond me. Or why he thinks buying a house you have to put money into fixing up and paying her back is a better deal than a house you wouldn't have to do any of that at all. Opie will be nuts to financially ties herself to this guy. Don't buy mom's house. Straight up tell him it's a crap deal and you aren't getting ripped off by his mom again. And tell him if he tries to tantrum his way into making you agree, then your relationship will be done. This is not how partnerships should work. Don't buy any other house either. Time to really think about the financial responsibility of this guy and the respect he actually has for you. Newsflash, he cares about keeping his mommy happy more than you or your life together. Update after talking to my boyfriend and showing him this post. He claims she will help us pay for the renovations of this house if we buy it and not let us be broke. He claims we won't have to give her 100k, but instead 50% of whatever we end up making off of it. In my opinion, still bad deal. He claims he doesn't even care about getting the house anymore. Despite all the comments, he doesn't feel like he is being a mama's boy or being delusional about it. In the comments, I mentioned that we started to fix up one of her house's basements so we can rent it from her. There was a lot of trash in there, so we spent days bagging it all up. After we cleaned it up, she went back on our deal and rented it to someone else. He says he isn't mad about that because we didn't put any money into it yet. We still ended up moving to a different one of her house's basements instead. I told him that even though she gave us another basement, she still lied to us, so she can't be trusted. Oh yeah, and she ended up throwing us out of that basement anyways, and putting all our stuff on the street. Pretty much that basement ended up flooding multiple times because she didn't take proper care of it. Since it was unlivable, we went apartment hunting. She got mad at us for finding a new place to live and then threw us out on streets before our new lease started. She even locked us out of a lot of our items and made us have to come back with the police to try to get it back. She tried to lie to the police and say we didn't even live there. All in all, he doesn't see that his mom can't be trusted and I don't understand why. I'm about to explode. At this point, I am worrying about moving in with him at all. This will continue to be a lifelong problem he has. Next story. 
Am I the a-hole for refusing to give my boyfriend a copy of the key to my deceased friend's place? My female 27 friend of 15 years, Aaron, male 30, passed away a few weeks ago. He wasn't married nor had a family, so I'm the one responsible for his belongings and his apartment. I keep the key with me to visit the apartment every weekend to check on it. My boyfriend noticed and asked to have a copy of the key to the apartment. I was utterly confused by his request. I asked what for, since he and Aaron weren't even that close given that he and I had been dating for six months. He got offended and accused me of gatekeeping Aaron's memory. I said I was sorry, but Aaron's apartment has valuable stuff that I cannot risk missing. And besides, what business could he possibly have there? He got offended and accused me of implying that he is untrustworthy and a thief. I tried to cut the argument, but he kept going on about how I hurt his feelings and showed an incredible amount of distrust towards him. He went home, but the texting kept going. He's insisting, saying if I trust him, then I gotta let him have a copy of the key. Am I the a-hole for not giving it to him, or am I being a reasonable paranoid? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. The fact he wants a key in the first place is weird. It sounds like he wants some control over your grief. But what makes me especially suspicious of his motives is, he got offended and accused me of implying that he is untrustworthy and a thief. You never implied that, did you? So him jumping straight to that conclusion might be telling of what is on his mind. I bet he just told himself here. He is definitely eyeing the valuables in that flat. No, I did not. I don't know where he came up with this idea. It's called projection, or more casually, a guilty conscience. Trust your instincts. Do not give him a copy of the key and don't leave it where he can access it. This is a major red flag, and it's time to reevaluate your relationship. He's gaslighting you about your friend who died to access his things. This is not a good guy. I second this. Like, what does he want in that apartment? Why the weird attitude? You just lost your best friend. He should be helping you through this, not pushing you to do something you don't want to do. Ditch the loser, not the a-hole. He accused Opie of implying he was untrustworthy and a thief. I think he told on himself right there. Maybe Aaron had a game system or watch collection that he was eyeballing. His reaction is too over the top for it to be an innocent reason that he wanted a key. The only other reason I can think of is that he wants to search for evidence of whether Opie and her friend were more than friends. He can't fathom a man and woman having a platonic relationship. That's a possibility, but I agree that it's probably just to take stuff. Or he wants to do something weird slash illegal there. I'd dump him for this. However, if you aren't there yet, Opie, for some weird reason because this is insane, get a camera in the friend's apartment and leave the key out where he can get it. See what happens when it goes there. Last story. Am I the a-hole for how I responded when my ex said he wanted to see our baby? A few people in my life have mixed opinions on this situation, so I'm posting for an outside opinion since I'm really unsure. I'm 16 female and my ex, Joe, is 17 male. I found out I was pregnant in December, when myself and Joe were on the verge of breaking up. In hindsight, I should have broken up with him sooner. Joe heard a rumor that I was lying about my pregnancy, and despite showing him the proof, he blocked me out entirely. I tried everything to contact him, but since I wasn't visibly pregnant, he refused to believe me. I have since spoken to a solicitor who unfortunately can't do anything since my ex doesn't have a known address, and I was never told his real surname. I decided it wasn't worth fighting. I avoided posting my pregnancy on social media and have never posted a picture of my daughter, who is now two months old. Yesterday, I went into town because baby is growing out of her clothes and needed some new ones. My ex frequents this area, and he ended up seeing me with a baby. He stopped me in the middle of the street with his new girlfriend and asked was the baby his. I said yes and tried to walk away, but he blocks my path and asked why I never told him. I told him I did, but he refused to believe me, so after a while, I gave up. I told him to leave me alone because I've received enough harassment from his friends for faking my pregnancy. I didn't want any contact from him. He tried contacting me through Instagram yesterday evening and I told him he wanted nothing to do with her until now. He's not having anything to do with her, especially since he's homeless and unemployed. There's no way he can support her. He's tried messaging me everywhere since and after speaking to some people in my friend circle, they're decided. They think I should show Joe some mercy but others disagree. I've done everything without his support until now, so I shouldn't even provide him with the option of it. Am I being unfair? Not the a-hole, but I would make sure that you communicate what happened to your solicitor. Joe may have a legal right to your child, even if he doesn't have a moral one. 
It's completely reasonable to want to protect your child from someone who treated you so badly. And just to second this, please gather all documentation you can to support your case. If you have any texts where you showed him proof of the pregnancy, save screenshots. You probably still have evidence of the harassing messages you received from his friends. Make sure to save those so you can demonstrate his ability to enlist his friends in a harassment campaign against you. Write down the timeline in an email and send it to someone you trust. So you have a timestamp if it tries to argue something different later. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. If he wants to step up and meet his child, he has a legal path forward here. He can file for custody, take the paternity test, get himself on a birth certificate, and then establish a visitation schedule and child support. I 100% agree. If he wants to be in contact with the baby, you can't block him because it will only backfire when the kid is older and will blame you for not having her father in her life. But he needs to take the legal route and take all of the legal responsibility that comes with being a father. P.S. Did he tell you a fake last name before? That bit is a bit shady to 